Hi, my name is Steve Bradshaw, and I'm going to quickly run you through how to install the new IBM ACS client. Uh, for those of you who don't know about ACS, where have you been hiding? Uh, this has been my daily driver for quite some time. Please forgive the audio qualities and the coughing. Um, as I record this, I have COVID, uh, which is one of the reasons why I have time to record this. But I am reliably informed that you won't be able to catch that through this medium, so let's crack on. Uh, the ACS client is a replacement for the old IBM iAccess for Windows client access. Um, it had many names from PC support all the way through to the IBM iAccess for Windows. Uh, these clients will coexist. I'm going to be focusing on the main client itself, not the ODPC driver. That's one for another day. All righty. So let's just get started. The best way to show you how to do it is to do it. We're going to do it in real time. It is not a long process. So I'm just going to switch to a, a VM I have up here. Uh, which has um, no IBM I access or the old client uh, in, in, installed upon it. So it's a fresh installation. Uh, I don't even have the install media to hand. So I'm going to start by going to my good old friend Google and saying IBM ACS download. Ignore the adverts. And pretty much the first thing you're going to find is the IBM ACS website. Whip into there. If you've already downloaded, obviously you don't have to do this every single time. Da -da. Once you've logged in, and if you don't have an account, you will need to create an IBM account. Uh, there's no proof, no cost. It's quite quick to sign up, and you can turn these preferences off so that you don't get um, spammed or mailed if you want. Just agree to the terms and conditions and download the client. So it'll give you all the various components. I'm going to be focusing on the 1.1.9 client, which is the latest as we stand at the moment. Um, there are all sorts of documentations and other plugins that we're not going to focus on for now, we're going to take the main product, which is going to be 90% of your needs. The download itself is about 136 meg, that's a compressed file. It is not that big, it comes down quite quickly. And if we have Java already installed on the PC, uh, so if you're one of those people who still uses the Oracle Java, for example, across the board, then that package is all you're going to need. Uh, I'm not going to have that. I'm going to download the uh, OpenJDK product as well, because I'm a great believer in that. And indeed, Java has started uh, Oracle has started charging for their version of Java. So um, another Google session, I was going to put uh, IBM ACS OpenJDK and ignore the advert. And I'm going to select that, which allows me to pick what version of Java I want. Um, Java 17 is out, but I'm going to stick with Java 11 because I've tested that. I'm going to be putting this on a 64-bit version of Windows. And so I am going to click on the zip version to download that as well. So that's now downloading. So I've got my two downloads. I've got my main product, which is what I need. If I have Java on there, that's all I need. If I don't have Java on the PC or I want to control the version of Java, I'm going to take this free open, um, uh, open JDK version as well. Uh, free as in Liberty, as well as in beer in this case. So that's got to be a winner. All right. So ultimately, I end up with two files in my downloads directory. Do, do, do. So the first thing I'm going to do is extract all of the files from those lovely things. Now, if any of you are curious about whether you can actually script this and set it to automatically download using group policies, yes, uh, that is not difficult. And it's something that we will cover in another video another time, but let's just stick to the basics for now. Having expanded out the, um, the zip file, you can see I've got a number of different subfolders that come in there. The actual program, just for your reference, that's it. That one single jar file, that is everything to do with the main ACS client. But these other things help you to actually document it and uh, have languages and indeed configure it and roll it out. So if I did have Java involved, technically I could just click on this and it would work, but that's not that neat. So IBM has wrapped up some nice little applications that go with it. So I'm going to pick the Windows application. Um, and this gives me an install function that allows me to answer a few questions and it will deploy it uh, the way that I want. I say deploy because you know, this isn't a Windows application. It doesn't need anything in the registry, although you know it does cooperate quite nicely with this. So I'm going to install this for uh, the 64-bit all users. So what does that mean? That's the 64-bit version of Java rather than Windows. Uh, so I would recommend that you use the 64-bit version of Windows and Java. But just so you know, that is not to do with the Windows version. It's to do with the Java version. Uh, and I can either do it for just the user I'm logged in as or all users. Well, anyone who logs into this particular VM, I would like them to be able to uh, 
to see uh, and use ACS. So I'm going to say all users. So it warns me I'm about to run a script. Scripts can do nasty things. Uh, am I prepared to run the script? Yes, because I just clicked on it. Okay, so it's going to ask me some questions. Okay, do I want to use the 5250 emulator? The answers to yeses and noes on this is going to be what I get left in the ACS main client screen. Uh, so I'm going to go through and take a typical installation, which is to answer yes to, to most things. So 5250, yes, I'd like to do that. Okay, do I want this to be the default program for 5250? If there is no other 5250 stuff on here, the answer is definitely yes. If you've still got the old IBM I Access for Windows, whatever you want to call it, um, and you want the two to coexist, say no to this because otherwise when you click on the sessions for your uh, old emulator, the new emulator will kick in. And you'll say, well, why wouldn't I want to do that? It's because every time you finish the session, it'll ask you to try and save and then they'll say you need to upgrade it. So short answer, if ACS is on its own, say yes to this. Right? If you've got this coexisting with the old IBM I Access for Windows, say no to this. So this is a fresh install, so I'll say yes. Do you want the users to be able to look at output? And we'll cover these functions in another video, but there is a great spool file viewer built into ACS. Okay, so I'm definitely going to say yes to that. Uh, do you want to look at other users' outputs? Well, okay, if this was a bog standard user, a basic user, you'd probably say no to that, so they couldn't see other people's printouts. Hey, but I'm quite nosy. I'm going to look at everything. I'm going to call myself an administrator. There's also a fantastic uh, tool to upload and download stuff from the IFS. Okay, if you want to give the people access to that, you say yes. Uh, do you want to allow data transfers? Yeah, okay, I think you're getting the idea of this. So I'm going to say yes to a lot of these. The Navigator for I is the new wonderful browser-based GUI interface for administering your system. More on that in different videos. Uh, so I definitely want access to that. And do I want um, to be able to manage SSL and TLS certificates? Uh, normal users, you'd probably say no. Power users and administrators, yes. Okay. Do you want to use the database tools? Uh, same as the previous one. If they're power users, yeah, absolutely. Or developers. And do they need access to the console? Okay, standard users, it'll be a no. Uh, but hey, I want them, so I'm going to say yes. And do you want to issue remote commands? I think you get the idea with this and the debuggers. So if you are an admin, you'll probably say yes to all of those. Do you want the shortcuts to go on your desktop? Well, why the hell not? Okay, so now I've answered those questions. It's built an, in, uh, an install script, which is just basically copying stuff around. If you're wondering whereabouts it's actually going to put it, because I said all users, it's going to go into the C drive users public uh, desktop. There, so just letting that finish. So the installation is finished. Okay, and it gives me one error and it says the error you've got, and it's stored in this file in this case is, I couldn't find a version of Java on here. So it's not gonna work without you adding the Java. Okay, and it suggests that you get Java 8 or Java 11, which is what I'm gonna do now. So if there are any other problems, it would have told me and it puts the details in a log file there. All right, so that is, ACS, if you like, deployed to the desktop. What do I actually see? Well, if I take a look at the desktop, I'll see two icons. That brings me the main ACS interface. And if I just wanted the 5050 sessions, I can go to the session manager, pull them out of there. And if I tried to run it, it told me there's no Java. So when I run it, nothing happens. So I need to pop a bit of Java in there. All right, so this is where I downloaded that other version of Java. As I mentioned earlier, if you'd already got Java installed, the Oracle one that's, or, or any version of Java that's sort of um, Windows wide, you wouldn't need to do this. I still like doing it because it um, allows me to get control over which version of Java I've got with which version of ACS. And if you want to deploy these centrally, you can package them all together. So I'm just extracting my version of Java. I'll take a minute or two. So time for a cup of tea. All right, so there's my Java deployed. So I'm just going to take that Java directory that um, was unzipped from there, and I'm going to put it in that default installation I told you about, which is in the C users public IBM client access solutions uh, start programs, and it was a 64 bit version of Windows version I picked. So you'll see that launcher is there, and I'm just going to drop that directory in there. That's it. All right, so now when I double click on my ACS, it actually loads. Woo. 
exciting times. So let's just close some of those bits underneath. If you already had a version of IBM iAccess for Windows on there, uh, it will actually automatically import the configurations from your old uh, version into your new one. Like all good users, I am fully empowered to read legal agreements and agree them on the behalf of all companies. Okay, fine. So I've said yes to that. And I now get my main ACS interface. Wunderbar. Okay. So what I was saying earlier is if this was coexisting with um, an existing older version of the IBM iAccess Windows product, your systems that you've got configured would already be in here. Okay. Uh, if not, then you can get the system uh, configuration option down here and you can add them. It doesn't take long. So I'm going to create a new system. Uh, I'm going to pop in their assistant name. So I'm going to call this one uh, Alison 74. Okay. I'll come back to groupings later. That's brand new to this version. But, but short answer um, in this video is if you've got lots of different systems that belong to a particular part of your business or a particular customer. So from my day job, we look after lots of different customers. So I could group all their different uh, partitions together. That's what their grouping's about, but we'll skip over that for a moment. Uh, I'm gonna skip uh, DNS resolution as well for the moment, just to keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna pop an IP address in for my system. 192, oh, sorry, one, two, two. okay. And I'm not even going to declare the console at the moment. I'm just going to do the most basics of connections. So having put the name in there and the IP address, I can just do a verify connection. And if it sees the machine, yeah, wonderful. So I've got one element there that uh, could not be verified. And that's to do with the navigator for iService. Okay, that probably hasn't been started on that particular partition for security reasons. So I'm now reasonably confident already that my system is ready to go. Close it. Click on my 5250 emulator. Uh, login with my normal IBMI login. Uh, let's have a think about that. And there we have it. So installed in ACS could not be easier. Don't forget to clean up after yourselves. It's always nice. So go back to your downloads directory. You can bin all of that stuff because it's no longer required. And everything that you need was in that C users uh, public IBM directory. So it's all contained in there. So if you wanted to update it to a newer version, there is an auto updater. But in essence, that single file is all you're going to have to update. If you want to start getting customized configurations, they're stored in that properties file just there. OK. Plenty more people will tell you things about configuring the client. I may even do some tips and tricks on it in a different video. But for now, there you go. Hope you found that useful. Cheers.